Hi, my name is Eskil Steenberg, and this is a little video I'm going to make about modern C development in Visual Studio. And this is especially for people who aren't C developers and who aren't on Windows, who are not sort of used to Visual Studio and, and all the things you can do in it. And the point of this is to talk about what is modern C development. And the code I'm going to use in, this, in these examples is C89. So this is code that would have run like 30 years ago, and it's going to run in 30 years. So um, when we talk about modern C, the language in itself is, is pretty static. Um, but we're going to talk about why um, a modern development environment is such a powerful thing. And uh, I'm not sponsored by Microsoft in any way. This is not, you know, they are not endorsing this. I'm, and I'm not being paid to do this. Uh, but Visual Studio is uh, pretty awesome, actually. And I think that if you're used to GCC or LLVM, Clang, that world, um, and are developing on a command line, um, you're really, really missing out because um, modern modern tools are awesome. So I want to I want to give you an overview of some of the things that you know some of the problems in C development that just goes away if you're using Visual Studio. So let's make some common mistakes. So here I have my, my first mistake. Uh, I'm going to have an uninitialized variable uh, in this little function. And um, if I try to compile this, I'm going to compile and run this, um, it is uh, not going to compile at all. So uninitialized variable used. So I can actually click just hover over it and it will tell me what's wrong. So this won't even compile. This, this, you know, it will just find this error. Um, so let's see. There we go. And now let's make it a little bit more complicated. So in this example, I have a function with two parameters and I have two if statements. And if the first if statement is true, then I will initialize the variable. And if the second uh, is true, then I will print out the value. So I've rigged this up to uh, not initialize the value, but print it out. So the, this time, the compiler can't look at this function and see that something's wrong, right? Because this could be a legal function, right? So we're going to run it and see what happens. So we're running, and immediately we get a runtime check failure. Variable value is being used without being initialized. So even when the compiler can't see it um, during compilation, it caches it uh, when running it. OK. So next, um, I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated. Uh, hold on. I'm just going to remove that one. Um, and in this example, uh, we're going to have an initial, um, an initial value. We're going to just allocate some memory. And we're not going to initialize it. We're just going to. Um, try to uh, do a dereference of a pointer that hasn't been set, right? So uh, I'm going to run this and see what happens. And I'm going to get an exception. And uh, now I can just move mouse over this pointer, and it will show me uh, the address, but it will show me what it's pointing to. And it's pointing to CD, 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 CD. And that's the. Uh, default initialization of all um, of Visual Studio. So if I see that CD, 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 I know it's an uninitialized variable. It's super easy to find. So uh, that is also very rarely a problem. And in fact, now when I hold over here, you can actually see other warnings come up here. So you can see the little squiggly line here. It says dereferencing null because malloc may return null. And Honestly, I don't actually use warnings. I don't look at warnings because they, they show up right in the, uh, in the um, code. And usually, you don't even have to compile the code to, to see them. Um, so next, um, I'm going to make a, a null reference. So I'm going to dereference null. So p happens to be null. And we're going to run this code and see what happens. Um, so we get an exception. So thrown right axis, p was null pointer. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, but you know it points me exactly where it happened, so I can find and fix it. 
Um, I don't have to, you know, I don't just get a seg fault and it's like, okay, something went wrong. I can see where it went wrong. Um, so um, those are also pretty straightforward. Um, let's go a little bit further. So now I'm going to trash the stack. So here we have an array of three integers and I'm going to write to the fourth integer. So um, yeah, let's, let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to run this program. And um, it won't actually compile because it will say buffer array of size 12 bytes will be overrun. Four bytes uh, will be written starting at the offset 12. So won't compile, can't make this mistake. Okay. So let's, uh, this is kind of easy stuff, right? You, you can see that. Uh, but let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's, let's trash the heap, right? So here we have the heap, and um, if we, uh, I'm allocating a bunch of space, and then I'm writing, you know, I'm, I'm allocating three bytes, um, and then I am uh, writing to very far outside of it. Okay, so let's see what happens. So we're compiling and running. Of course, we get an exception, write violation, blah, blah, blah. So this is pretty straightforward, right? You can, you can see that I'm, you know, I'm writing outside of P, um, and clearly um, this is, you know, outside of the pages, the page, you know, the, the MMU will tell me I got a sug fault, you know, something bad happened, you know, very good. But uh, let's make it harder for the compiler. So I'm gonna change this to three. So if you know anything about this, uh, about how malloc works, malloc has to return something that is aligned. And that means that it will probably, you know, the smallest allocation you can actually get has to be an even eight bytes. Um, and that means that if you allocate three bytes, you will actually probably get eight bytes. And something you can guarantee is that um, the bytes after this will be in the same page. So the MMU will not save you, right? Because you're right outside, you're still in the same page. Therefore, the MMU will, you know, will not get a right exception. Okay, so uh, let's let's see if we can run this code. Okay, so now we get a debug error again. So we get a heap corruption detection, right? Okay, so again, it found it. I can tr uh, say try again, and I can pause, and it will tell me, you know, here's where I freed this pointer. Something went wrong. Uh, I have written outside of that pointer. So even though I am uh, not being caught as a seg fault, I can still you know, find the issue. Um, there's more advanced tools you can use for this uh, that you can write yourself, but this is, this is pretty, pretty awesome uh, to get you started. And let's move on for a second. So uh, next I want to talk about how my build environment works. Um, so I don't use make files. I just <clears throat> take my files and I pour them into a directory. And then I use these pragmas to load in the, uh, um, the libraries that I need. So uh, it's incredibly portable and I don't ever have to, you know, move file paths or anything like that. Um, so, Let's actually show a real live project. <clears throat> so here I have a little OpenGL draw thingy that is running, and I have a um, debugger here, um, and this is Visual Studio running. So one of the really important things that is different from how non-Visual Studio people think about debugging is they think a debugger is something you use when you debug. And in my opinion, that's completely wrong you are using a debugger to develop. Everything is always running in a debugger. You don't break out the debugger when you don't know what's going on. You have the debugger at all time. So let's put some breakpoints in here. So I can put a breakpoint and you know it stops. Um, and I can now mouse over any value I want and see what they are. So I don't have to print that if I don't have to, you know, I can see everything. Um, it also has conditional variables. Um, that so you know, uh, conditional breakpoints. Um, I don't use those. I just use an if statement or something, and then I put a breakpoint on a no op. So here I have a you know I check if the mouse button is pressed, and when it does, I get a breakpoint. 
And <clears throat> that's that's super useful. Um, what you can also do is, is do a little bit deeper inspection. So here, for instance, we have this input. What is that? So I can go here and right click and press uh, quick watch and I get this window and here I can see all the data I can you know check out everything and I can even modify this one so this um, input uh, I can go to pointers which is a pointer to pointers and I can see comma you know five and now I'm telling Visual Studio there's five of these so I can now <clears throat> look at my five pointers and see all the data inside of them so I can really easily um, extract information about what's going on. <clears throat> I can go further than that. Let's have a look up here. Here's a user pointer, which is a void pointer. So not really easy to get much information out of it. So I'm going to quick watch that. And here's the address. Um, but I can now actually uh, do a cast here. So I can I can say float. Cast is a float pointer. And now all of a sudden I can see that it's, oh, it's pi. Right, so I can read out information from a pointer, even though I don't know what type it is. So I can really write complicated expressions here. And Quick Watch is super cool. The only bad thing about it is it locks um, uh, Visual Studio, so you can't access anything other than Quick Watch. So Microsoft, please fix. Um, but yeah, this this means that it's incredibly powerful. Let's <clears throat> continue the application, and now. We can go a bit further. So um, for instance, you can see these little cubes here. Here's the drawing of those. And I can change numbers here. So I'm going to change 50 to 25. And then I can do a hot reload. So now, while this is running, boom, I'm changing that number. right? So now you can see they're, they're next to each other. Or I can even, you know, that's just a poke in the number. You just change the number. But here I can actually add a for loop. So I can do that. and now we're going to say boom now so now we have two rows change this to i don't know 20. right so um yes this is a debugger but you can you can tell the iteration speed of this is incredible right you can just play around and you know eventually you're going to have to restart your application but but this is this is really truly powerful and um, compared to using, you know, print apps where you have to rerun your application every time you want to know something, um, this is just like a whole another world of, of productivity. And whenever you stop on anything, um, you have not only every value available, but you also have your call stacks. You can go back uh, and see where all the other things are, you know, what called what and figure out why is the thing calling the thing with the wrong parameters. You can also see all your threads here. To You can s jump to all the threads and, and see uh, what you want to do. There's a special command in Windows where you can actually name your threads, which is super useful. So yes, that was uh, my short uh, showcase of Visual Studio. And this is really why I think that uh, the future of C is actually not more language but more tools. Um, I have a whole bunch of homemade tools that I'm going to hopefully make another video of, um, but that's it for this one.